Everything we've described so far has been fluid statics. Now we're going to move to fluid dynamics where the fluids are in motion. The problem is this is actually incredibly difficult math. And if you haven't had a course in partial differential equations, you wouldn't be able to do it. The, what we have to do instead is restrict ourselves, just like the problem of an object falling through the air can be pretty, pretty painful to do if we imagine it's a styrofoam ball. If we get rid of the air, it makes the problem almost trivial. We're going to take some similar simplifications here so that we can do something with uh, fluid dynamics. Our four basic assumptions, one, we're going to assume incompressibility, which we've already talked about. The density of the fluid is constant regardless of the external pressure. As we said before, this isn't a bad approximation. The next one, what's called laminar flow or steady flow. If you imagine you're, you're standing beside a stream watching the water go by, and you put a tiny little velocity sensor on the stream bed, you could measure the speed and direction of water moving past it at any instant. If the flow is steady, this would just be a constant. It's always moving same speed, same direction as measured by our, our sensor at that particular point. In turbulent flow, you'll, like you might see in rough water, river rapids, things like that, the water's direction and speed could be all over the place at that one single point, going one way one second and a different way the next second. So we're going to assume a nice, smooth, steady flow. We're also going to assume the flow is non-viscous. Viscosity is like the fluid equivalent of friction. You imagine you're stirring some fluid, you take the spoon out. If it stops moving very quickly, it's high viscosity, something like tar, syrup. A low viscosity fluid would keep rotating for a while after you stop stirring, like water, coffee, that kind of thing. There are things known as superfluids, which have zero viscosity and should keep spinning forever once you do that, but we're not going to worry about those. Finally, irrotational flow. If we imagine dropping a little paddle wheel in this stream and watching it go downstream, what we see is it might move in kind of a weird weird path as it follows the water, but it's not rotating as it goes. This little red star that's our marking point is not spinning around and around as it travels. Any one of these assumptions by itself is not too bad. All of them together is is getting kind of ridiculous, but we can still explain a few things even with these restrictions. The first thing we're going <clears> to <throat> use is the continuity equation. This is a lot like what we used with hydraulic systems before, and all we're requiring here is incompressibility. So if we can't compress the fluid, we can follow it through a pipe that has a changing diameter by noticing that its velocity times area at one part of the pipe has to equal velocity times the area at another part of the pipe because that's the volume flow rate in cubic meters per second. This is used, well, sometimes we use capital R for this. If we wanted to find the mass flow rate in kilograms per second, we would just multiply R by the density. This is what happens if you put your thumb over a garden hose. You're reducing the opening area of the water, and that means it has to speed up if the water behind it, at a, through moving through a larger area, is all going to get out as more water fills it up. So one of the questions that we could ask, we know velocity will go up at the output end. What about the pressure? Because if you ask people, most of them would probably say the pressure goes up when you put your finger over the end of the hose. So let's look at a, a similar situation where we have a large pipe going to a small pipe. We figured out that the water has to move faster at the small end. So we can imagine following a little sort of slug of water, this little cylindrical piece here, as it moves from the large pipe to the small pipe. If it's going to be moving faster on the left, it has to be accelerating to the left. And the only way that can happen is if the force pushing to the left is larger than the force pushing from the right. The force is pressure times area. The area of each side of this little slug is the same. So we get that we have to have a lower pressure in the smaller tube. 